and we're good to go. We're recording. All right, good evening. It is Monday, July 6, 2020, and I'd like to call the meeting of the Keisha Farms Committee to order. It is 5.35. Should we take a roll call? Yeah, you can. Okay. All right. um, Dan Silbo. I'm here. Pam Rowe. I'm here. Jim Woodworth. Here. Mary Bratton. Here. Mike Orsini. Here. And Gina Golis. Jenna, here. Jenna, Jenna, my fault. Sorry, <laughs> since March. Jenna. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Um, Tara Costanza. And Paul, what, what, who's, who's missing? Lucella. Paul Lucella. Yep. Paul Lucella. Mm -hmm. Not here. All right. So uh, first order of business is approval of the minutes from our last meeting, which everybody should have received months ago. Are there mm -hmm. any, any corrections or uh, additions to the minutes? Page okay. two, third line, the letter A. Just kidding. There's no. I make a motion <laughs> to approve the minutes. All right. Do we have a second? I second it. All right. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. Um, open issues, old business. Gary, do you want to take the lead on that? Because the last thing we did was we chose a, um, a company that was going to do our visioning sessions. So I'm going to put myself on mute and let you. Can I put myself on mute too? <laughs> uh, Right, so it's been it's been a roller coaster uh, of a year end. Um, the committee did a lot of great work in selecting a, 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 um, a consultant. Um, we had a lot of concerns going into once COVID hit, what reality was going to look like, um, both from an operational standpoint and also from a fiscal or financial standpoint. Um, when it came down to it at the council level, um, my original budget included money for a consultant as a special line item as part of capital. Um, capital, as you know, historically has been around $900,000 per year, which uh, really from a municipal standpoint, our capital improvement budget should be bigger. Uh, the mayor was very supportive of moving that from $900,000 to a million um, in our discussions. Um, and then the reality of the situation hit by the time we got to budget time that <laughs> were we concerned about lost revenue because we didn't know what COVID was going to do? We didn't know if we were going to, what type of taxation structure we were going to be able to have in place, whether or not we we're going to be losing revenues from the state, whether or not we we're going to get reimbursed for any of the revenues that we were outlaying in order to provide protective measures. Um, in fact, we still don't know what we're going to be reimbursed for. Um, and what we ended up with was a very tight budget year. And um, not only was we unable to keep money in the budget for a consultant, but many of the capital projects themselves were reduced, uh, I want to say, to $580,000, $576,000 from the $900,000 that we usually have in order to preserve the mill rate um, at or below where it currently was. So we didn't receive the money for the consultant. I have had a couple conversations with council about trying to find alternative ways to fund it. They didn't object to me necessarily looking into these. So vibrant community initiatives and other funding sometimes available from the state. Um, they weren't necessarily opposed to me trying to consider using reserve funds in the future, but that's not something they want me to touch in the next few months simply because until we have a better idea of what when school gets open, whether or not the federal government is gonna reimburse at what level will the state reimburse, they wanna be careful with using reserves because frankly, we may need those for operational components effective July 1, 2021. Uh, so what I, I just got off the phone with the mayor, so I haven't had a chance to um, kind of vet some of this with just my own knowledge of things that I, resources where I can find money, um, but to look to see if there's alternate opportunities we can go after in the next month or two or three that would bring in some revenue for us to bring on the existing consultant or do we go back to the consultant and maybe start chipping away um, mm. kind of splitting this up into multiple taking the multiple phases and attaching a dollar amount to it so it's more palatable over a two-year period 
Um, so I, unfortunately, it looks like we don't have the revenue lined up to have a full-blown consulting process. Frankly, a lot of these charrettes take place in a public venue anyway, where people need to gather. We, it was a harder to do in a Zoom call. So frankly, um, it, it might financially make sense not to, uh, not to move forward at this point anyway, um, even if we had gotten the funding until we could gather. I should add that in. So with that, I'm happy to answer questions or maybe food for thought or things that we might be able to do, but maybe that falls under new business. But in terms of old business, we have to put hiring, the, bringing the consultant on in the next month or two, uh, kind of on the back burner. Well, I don't think that was unexpected at all. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have anticipated that this would have been a priority. And I think for all the reasons you mentioned, you know, certainly there are far more important things that the community has to deal with. However, I wouldn't also uh, hesitate to say that there could be a silver lining and that it gives us some opportunity to explore some of the things that we could do with the farm at, a, at our own level. And, and again, the charrettes are impossible. I can't imagine gathering people in a gymnasium for voting and looking at, you know, uh, boards or, or penciling in ideas or things. But I think in the, within the, the committee itself, we all had some interesting ideas that we expressed at the beginning, some areas of expertise, and maybe we could just do those things that are free or inexpensive. I know uh, Jim had an idea. I've had an, some ideas. Um, you know, maybe we could just toss around, what can we do uh, for free that would help bring to the community's attention the possibilities of this great piece of property? So uh, let's hear from the floor. Well, I certainly would uh, say that we should bring in uh, Kip Kolosinskis, who saw services are free. Uh, I sent around his bio, but he's with the Yukon Extension, new farmer, something, whatever it is, and he could he could uh, explore the options for farming, and those come with the possibility of grants, both federal and state grants, um, either matching or, or outright grants, and uh, something we can explore um, <clears throat> without a budget. And I took it upon myself to write to um, the Newton community farm. If you remember, I think we all loved one of the proposals from the uh, Boston consultant. It turned out to be the most expensive one, but in the back of their proposal, they uh, touted the development of the Newton community farm. So I wrote to them and asked that, told them we met once a month on a Monday and that they're about 15 years ahead of us. They bought the last farm in Newton 15 years ago and worked to bring it up to where it is today, which is it doesn't look like it has recreational facilities on it, sporting facilities, but that's part of our mix. But it does have educational facilities. It does have hoop houses. Um, it does have internships for high school students. Um, it does have adult programming and children's programming. And I asked if maybe a representative would be willing to meet on our next Zoom call just to tell us how they did it. I mean, they did it almost exactly the way we did it with no funding whatsoever. And now I think they contribute, uh, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year to the town budget. They are a 501c3 corporation, so we could talk about that with them too. But um, I haven't, I obviously, I just did it, so I haven't gotten an answer, but I'd love to talk to someone who started where we are and then brought it into this wonderful community facility. See, they do a farm to table dinner and they have a Halloween festival. They have two hoop houses where they teach young kids to grow vegetables. Internships, like I said, from high school students, adult programming, all kinds of things that sound like they'd be great community assets and maybe pay for themselves too. So that was my part. That's what I did anyway, to try and advance us uh, without costing us anything. Anyone else thinking or brainstorming? You know, I think you're going the right direction though, Cindy. I don't think there's gonna be any, I don't think anybody would, would agree that uh, this is the time that we need not to spend a penny. You know, I mean, we really have to be very smart, very frugal, and people were anxious about it to begin with. This would just set everybody over the edge, you know? Free is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I agree with you, Pam. And that was my thought from the very beginning that this farm will never cost the town anything. It will, it will become not only a, a beautiful destination, but an asset as well. Um, I was wondering, and maybe Jim, you might be the only one that can answer this. Is there any way that our barn could be designated historic and then qualify for funds for restoration? Uh, I, I know we've kind of missed the deadline for this year, but if we were prepared, we might be able to do something with the Connecticut uh, Historic Preservation grants to, to fix the barn. Do you have any insight into that? I don't, I don't know what the actual present status is, but they certainly had a program and they're continuing that program. We should definitely reach out to them, see what, what's, what options are there. Connecticut mm -hmm. Trust for Historic Preservation, I think is the title. And they have uh, circuit writers or people that can come around and talk to people, um, <clears throat> take a look at it and, and uh, see what the possibilities are. They originally concentrated on these really old, unusual, unique barns, but now we're, we're talking about a, a functional dairy barn from the 30s or whenever it was. And, you know, could be a, it's a community, potential community asset. Dan, how, how about you? Any ideas on how we can make a um, a, a playing field happen there, or at least think about it while we are on hold. Yeah, am I not okay? I'm unmuted. Um, I mean, the only thing I can think about as far as raising funds is you'd have to contact all the sports groups and see what they're willing to give. And what you do is kind of pool the money and develop one field at a time. You can't develop two, three, four fields. Um, you know, and right now the fields are all resting. So the fields are in great shape right now because nobody's playing on them. But as soon as they start playing on them, we run into the same problem uh, where they're just not in, in great shape. Um, so, I mean, the town, I think, does need several more athletic fields. Any more than that, I don't really know. So I, I would just say, um, you know, whatever we do, I, I think you need to set aside at least some land for those uh, athletic fields. And then the rest of the property, I think we develop as however we see fit for it. Did, I, don't uh, else, I don't know who else anybody, how uh, everybody else feels about that, but. Yeah. Did the, did the uh, uh, athletic field study, I think you were gonna send us the results of that study. I, um, think, um, the, I think it was the field condition thing. I think Kathy had it. Uh, so, uh, I think Gary has it. It's got a listing of all the fields and their conditions. And that was as of, I don't know if it was in the fall or if it was at the spring, but uh, I forget what we had. Late fall. Yeah. Might have been early spring. Honestly, yeah. I months yeah. have blended together. It could have actually yeah. been in February by the time we were tightening it up, but I'll have to look. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Cindy, I was just thinking it's not really a profit thing, but it, or I don't think it would cost any money, but Jim, I was thinking along the lines of like nature walks just to promote mm -hmm. the, the land mm -hmm. and it wouldn't have to be groomed or anything that much, but just to raise awareness and have people walk the property and make it available. Um, maybe we would have to have somebody be a tour guide at first, but everyone's out there taking walks because it's about the only thing we can do. And it's so, you know, we can make it a nice um, respite for folks. I mean, I would like to see, um, like uh, skiing trails in there, the um, cross country cross -country. skiing, that type of thing for passive recreation. And I don't know how much, uh, you know, how much work has to go into that. I don't know if you can contact the Boy Scouts and maybe they can do some of the work for us. I know there's different people with Eagle Scout <laughs> projects and things like that. Um, I know they, we had them build, um, I think it was the, uh, it was a storage facility at the new Little League field, and that was, uh, I think, an Eagle Scout project. The town might have supplied the supplies, and they built the whole thing, and it, that that type of thing where it saves you a lot of money on labor. And and, uh, and it wouldn't have to be extravagant at first. It would just be yeah. very simple. Maybe we start off very small and yeah. safe. Yeah. The only, uh, just two quick concerns, because I have to put my town manager hat on. Um, is in and around the barn. I would probably want to lock that down. 
at some point there was broken glass and some damage yeah. done to the doors. Mm -hmm. I'd be afraid to let people in the building. But let me think. Yeah. But maybe we can secure the building and still make that part of a tour if it was guided. The problem with a guided tour is then it becomes actually a town related event. So, you know, maybe I'll just run that by and figure out a good way to do that in a protective sort of way so we can do it. Um, uh, cross the Boy Scout thing is interesting because I was, I did get contact from an Eagle Scout who had a project that they wanted to do. It was a great project. Unfortunately, what they want to do is something that they just, they can't, they wanted to do some, um, some work. I don't want to say where, um, but the, it's in a regulated area. So they couldn't put, they needed to put fill in. They wanted to fix some, um, you know, some paths. Um, and it's something that I'm not sure we're going to be able to do. Maybe I can redirect them to this conversation mm -hmm. um, as yeah. part of it. You know, and maybe I don't know what staffing's like at the Nature Center right now, but maybe I can take some of their talent and redirect it towards marking parts yeah. of a trail out. Uh, I don't know, just a thought. Gary, can, know, can any funding be directed from the um, Eleanor Buck uh, Nature Center? Can any of that be to start us off or no? I don't know well enough to say what the requirements were on it, if it has to be specific too, but I, if you're running Act, programmatic activity there probably, um, but I think general maintenance probably not. But I'll 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 ask Kathy to get me a copy of the deed and the restrictions related to the funds. So if we were going to do something like that, do we have to go in there first, create some kind of established trail, or make sure everything's safe and secure? There's no debris or glass, like you say, or anything dangerous before we could offer it. So there would have to be some preparation before we could could do anything like that, I'm assuming. So Correct. Okay. We're definitely due for another tour. For starters. Yeah, now that there's, it was snowy that day. There was snow in the ground, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have a quick question. So are we, I know one of the last things we want to look is if this group is making decisions for the town. I know this is, I'm assuming we're thinking this is a short term until the town can get together and discuss their suggestions, right? Yes. Because that, you know, that'll come out there. Somehow it'll look as if this committee came up with a tour or a skiing or what have you, and it hasn't really been put out to the town. So, whatever, so I guess what I'm saying is whatever we do, we might want to consider this as being a temporary measure and to, would be our comment until we have the opportunity to present to the town and let them have input. Do you, do you agree or just? Seems like this is more of a, of a opening up the options so the town can come up with some recommendations. I mean, we can't have the charrettes, but we could have a walk. Right, right. It, I think it's like, it, you know, we're making a good of a bad, you know, a tough situation where interim on an interim basis what can we do that doesn't i think it's like a messaging that we give you know yeah we go to town council we tell them we you know we do um maybe some communication maybe we you know start to get the word out there i think no one would really have a problem with us trying to use something that we purchased for free absolutely for free. Pam raises an important point that we need to get our messaging out. I think it should be stated that there won't be a consultant hired. I mean, maybe we need an article or some kind of communication, but we aren't right. going to hire a consultant. Listener. That had been the plan to invite the community in to give us direction. So, and, and everybody will understand that because of the need to conserve funding for the unknown and the known about schools and things this uh, fall. And that we are going to tentatively try to look for ways that are cost free to invite the public in to see the potential. Right. What we need is some some publicity in a in a sense or news about the, the some kind of communication. Mm -hmm. So I could maybe start at a council meeting. The problem is the next council meet we're having one tonight, uh, but it's okay. too late to get it on the agenda. The next council meeting isn't until the first week in August. You know, I, I want to make sure that we're, well, I guess I could put something in my town manager's report. But I'm kind of working backwards saying we've got to inform the public in general some next steps that we're doing. 
um, mostly from, again, I'm going back to like an insurance cover my, our, um, cover us from any potential suits uh, to right. say, you know, over the next few months, we'll be doing X, Y, and Z. Um, you, we could have an entire marketing component on it. I'm just, I know with something like the town manager's report, I can get it out to a, a volume of people that talks a little bit about these are the next three things that we're doing. And um, my, we might have to just circle back because I've got to check in with physical services staff and uh, just to see what their capacity is to at least maybe blaze some of the trail um, or at least get in there to clean it up. All right, so I don't want to say effective today, July 13th, just to give it a, a month, you know, uh, the town will be cleaning up the area. I, I just, I need to know when they can get out there. We, but we can, in the interim, schedule a, a meeting for our a tour of, uh, of us so we can see what possibilities are out there. Oh, a tour of our group? Yeah. Yeah. Starters. Yeah. Yep. Cindy, I think your idea is wonderful about the Newton, Newton Center area. Yeah. I think they've done what we are trying to do, and I think they, they would be a wealth of information for us. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll respond. I'll let you know. Is there any other new business to discuss? Well, what about inviting Kip Kolosinskis to come in and take a tour? So he can give us some thoughts about agricultural uses, potential farmers or potential uh, temporary or that kind of thing for the for barn and the house and the, and the farmland. Mary, what do you think about that? Is that Mary or Gary? I think it's Gary. It's Gary. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I was kind of waiting, hoping Mary was going to answer. Um, <laughs> Sure. Well, I, I guess my question is, uh, which one do you do first? Do you talk to the Newport people to get an idea of what they were saying and then talk to someone like Kip who can refine it specific to the area? Um, and then you can kind of have this dialogue with Kip to say, okay, well, you know, the Newton people said this, is this something you can see here? Or, you know, how would you set something like that up? Um, or do you do Kip first and then the Newton people? Um, I think you, you go on you both of them both? at the same time and see what happens. I also should tell everyone there's an incredible website. The Newton Community Farm has an extensive website, you know, that you can all look at. I mean, they, they are a nonprofit, so they solicit donations. They have all different levels. They have corporate donors. They list all of their activities, all their educational programs. There's pictures. So... Kip could, be, Kip could be directed there. We could all look at it as well. And uh, we probably could do both simultaneously. I can't promise that they're going to be willing to, you know, share a Zoom meeting with us, but we can certainly look and see what they've done. Right. And maybe oh. both, both things simultaneously. There was um, somebody at work told me about this. I guess Manchester bought a, an older barn a few years ago and they developed it into like a... Um, almost like an ongoing tag sale or, or something like that. And they used the money that they raised from that barn to go back into improving things, you know, in the area. In, in, you know, I, I'm just throwing things out, but that's, uh, yeah. if I can't remember who, who told me that, but I said, oh, let me bring that up at one of the meetings. But it's basically self-funding to improve things, uh, you know, in that whole area where they have around the barn, they picked up the barn, they picked up the land around there, and and that way it's self-funding. Do they have a website too? Yeah. Jeez. And you could you could do a farmers market. You could move. I'm not saying we should, but you could look at creating a farmers market there. Not for nothing, mm -hmm. it is a farm. Mm -hmm. um, but you're talking now. You're talking about traffic in the area. Yeah. Although, you know, the, right. the 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 temporary thought right now is to use the area by the barn, not by the barn, but like that front area is kind of create an off street parking to get cars off the road temporarily during the sports season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you probably have some parking and you could do the farmer's market in the back. I'm not saying I want to take it away or move it from old Weathersfield. Um, it's just a thought. Um, there's, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of creative things. I mean, I was part of urban Oaks organic farm back in the nineties in New Britain. Um, 
where we took a blighted property and you know did a big community project there, cleaned it out, and using state and federal funds and town funds turned it into a turned it into a, a functioning organic farm. Um, you know, there in Willimantic area, um, the you know, there was partnerships with a canning, so you had all the farmers market. With all, there's such a high percentage of produce, it just gets thrown away or can't get used in the in a restaurant in the restaurant industry. And maybe Gina can jump in on this one, but uh, uh, but the uh, but the idea is that what do you do with all those pro all the produce that uh, you can't sell at a farmer's market. Well, you can it, you preserve it, you could create a canning line. I mean, there's great ways you can, you can create a work study program out of this. Um, you've got 35 acres, you just got to figure out how you want to carve it up. But it's also possible to get a farmer to come in and do something like that. And that's something that Kip, Kip could help us uh, explore those possibilities. Um, there are people, farmers looking for farms. Um, they could match up a few farmers, take a look at what we have. Right, so what you, what you have to be careful with is that is it's town owned property, which means they cannot earn revenue off of it. Mm. So you could use it as a training ground and then maybe partner with some of the farmers in town to see if they wanna carve off some of their lots. But you gotta be careful on whether or not we can commit to allowing people to use that for farming for revenue generation. Why is that, why would, this with our property be different from Rocky Hill, which just purchased a farm and they're working on leasing it to farmers. Those are the rules. What do you, well, I don't understand. Town ordinance. So our town ordinances are different from Rocky Hills? Sure. I'm not saying you can't change the ordinance. Well, it's, that's something to know about to, to that so we can change it. <laughs> The other thing that I can I conveyed to the Newton people was is that the two hoop houses in the barn are right adjacent to an elementary school, which just opens up enormous possibilities for the school, you know, for STEM teaching, for sure. you know, kids working in hoop houses mm -hmm. if we can get them restored. So I mean that's another thing maybe Jim Kip could give us some some insight into what it would take to fix those and you know how we could utilize those. And uh, is is the haying still being done this year? Gary? Yep. He is. And does, um, he, does he sell that? Mm, hang on. He, he wasn't hanging. Hang. He planted think, corn last year. He's planted oats this year, I understand. He t it's, that's what he said anyway. Yeah, he, the haying is done on Wilkes. Oh, okay. The corn, uh, he, yeah, he does that for feed. That, you know, that's, um, that's hobbying. But yeah. Hobby. Yeah. He's, okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Out there. But that's keeping the farmland farmland for us. Right. What about community farming? Do we need do we need any of that town? Um, I mean the ones in old Weathersfield, I don't know what the numbers look like. You mean in terms of uh like um personal people growing their own, like yeah, just offering up some part of the land for that. Like what they have in back of the fire department? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of those plots are, I think there's some vacancies in those plots, but maybe if they were, if there were some on that side of town, they might be filled. I, yeah, because I mean, I don't know, Mike, do you know of any around here, around us? No, 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 I don't. No. Not, not in Weathersfield, at least. I know Newington has a real big one. I don't know what irrigation is up there. Is there, I know there's water, obviously. I think there's there's definitely water by the barn. I think there might be water down uh, on the other side across the street as well. <coughs> but I'm not sure about that. Well, the, the nearest water you're going to have across the street would be where the house is. Right. Yeah, the, the, there's going to be a, a tee off the main that goes into obviously right. the property. I think there might have been a well, but I don't know where. You yeah, know, they could. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Yeah. True. Well. Okay, anything else? There, there was a, just to, to add on, there was, when we did the Wilkes farm, there was talk of having community guards there. It never, nothing ever happened with that. I don't know what the demand is on Upper Weathersfield. <coughs> but. 
That's a good question. So, sorry, Mary. No, I, I was going to go on to, before we wrap the meeting up, I want to make sure we do next steps. Like what's the next thing we're going to do? Um, tour, you know, what's the order of things that we can stay on track? So I wrote down tour for the staff, including Kip Kolosenkis, looking into the Manchester Barn website to see what they do and, and how they do it. Um, to maybe have um, Dan with your contacts with the Boy Scouts investigate whether they would be interested in doing any kind of work or programs for us and that Gary you're going to get the field condition study for us to share so that we can we can see that and I know you mentioned funds from sports groups uh, Dan but we that might be premature at this point till we till we know what we're doing but that's out there and I, I I have it noted and I think it's a, a great idea. So and Cindy, you let us know about the uh, new, uh, Newport, is it? New 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 Newton Mass. Newton. Yeah, Newton. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will be very excited if they, um, if they say yes. And I hope all of you will go to look at their website. Yeah. Because, uh, it's, ex it's extensive and you know, they have their two hoop houses and it just gets you excited about the possibilities. So. Um, and Gary, are you, are you going to give a um, report, just a little minor update tonight, and then do we need to prepare for August 3rd, or? Um, I don't have a spot on the agenda to talk about Keisha. I'm just trying to think where I, I don't think there's anything on discussion, an area in discussion. I think for next meeting, I probably could do an update, but okay. maybe, maybe we have, Maybe for my manager's report, like mid month, just looking at a calendar. Um, yeah, maybe something on the twenty week of the twenty fourth. Maybe maybe we can between now and the twenty fourth come up with some language. Maybe I'll take whatever you'd put in the minutes, Mary, and try to figure out how to elaborate on it, and I'll send it to you guys for um kind of like feedback just in general about keisha farms met to talk about x y and z and these are the next and I'm, I'm making this up these are the next three things that will be coming up you know the next meeting is august my calendar doesn't go to august um august whatever um you know based off of the minutes i'm sure within the next three weeks i'll see the minutes from you mary i know you're really good with that kind of stuff so I'll just, I'll see if I can spin the minutes to be more <laughs> of And make sure you let everybody know that there is no consultant. There is, you know, we, we recognize the, the situation the town and community are in, and we're looking for creative ways to move forward that don't cost anything with an eye to the future. So make sure that's the lead. You know, we're, we, we understand and, and we get it. Um, is it allowable, Gary, for me to do something like contact the Connecticut Trust for Historic Preservation just to explore what's there for um, barn restoration or barn recognition? I would actually start with like a Mary Dunn from, from the State Historic Preservation Office because she runs the money uh, okay. and let her direct you to them. Okay. And the only reason I'm saying that is because if the if SHPO's behind it, the trust is more likely to get behind it too. Okay. One of the thing that, things the trust might do is send somebody out to look at the barn and you know tell us what we what we have. Yeah, they'll and send a circuit like, rider out. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Do we get any correspondence? Anything? No. Nope. Okay. Are there any members of the public here? Can we tell? I can tell and I see none. Okay. Okay. Any other business for the good of the cause? Everybody has something to do kind of yeah. moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Right. I just, I have a question. Who, um, who approved, who made a motion to approve the minutes? Was that to you, Dan or, okay. <laughs> It was a, I know it was a, is a, a gentleman. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no.
no other business and, and nobody has anything else if we I take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Oh, oh second. Get that, Mary? Dan and Jim? Yep. All right, thank you. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It was great to see all of you. Yeah. I hope yeah. your, your families are well and I'm so happy we're thinking about this again. And uh, that, you know, someday it'll be a great community asset. It already <laughs> exists and it will be- Someday if we can actually go outside and enjoy it. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's better because we can actually really get to know the land a little better. Before yeah, we that's true. Get a feel for it. I yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, Good night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank, thanks so much. All right. Gary, quick question. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I